So let's see, case uh, six. All right, so what did you think uh, this one is? Oh, I guess I got to pull out history. Well, you can read me. What's the, what's the history? Uh, uh, this is a 25 year old female with a rapidly growing three centimeter forearm lesion. Okay. Um, you know, it's like a uh, encapsulated nodule with like yep. lots of like a tissue culture appearance, mm. uh, like a spindle cell growth, a fibroblast. Yeah. Uh, which it's suggestive of like a especially the clinical course suggested of nodular fasciitis. Yeah, that clinical of a rapid growing but relatively small lesion, often on the extremities of a young adult, although it can occur in kids, it can occur in old patients, it can sometimes be on the head and neck. Um, those, are, those are always, though, a, a good history for nodular fasciitis or other related entities. And like you said, the, the lesion, the classic areas are like this, these feathery tissue culture kind of areas which are made of these plump um, spindled and stellate myofibroblasts with a background of kind of loose myxoid uh, change and a little bit of collagen. And that's kind of, this is what people describe as tissue culture. And the idea is that it looks similar to what uh, fibroblasts look like if you're growing them in a cell culture dish, which I've never done. So I feel like the tissue culture name works well if you've worked in a lab at, where you've grown cells in a culture dish. But for a lot of people, um, they may not know that what that looks like. So to me, I think this looks kind of loose and feathery. Those are the kind of visual terms I use. And um, I find one of the most helpful features to be this, the, the presence of these cystic myxoid little microcysts, cystic degeneration with myxoid change is really classic and present in the majority of cases of nodular fasciitis that I see. Sometimes it can be even bigger cysts. Um, and then the cellularity can vary from being really cellular towards more kind of low cellularity as the lesion gets old and kind of burns out. Um, also, you, as the lesions kind of get older, you tend to see more sclerosis and a more abundant collagen in them. So they can run a range um, of uh, features. And the cells should, can, they can be kind of plump, but they should not have severe atypia or, or nuclear pleomorphism. Although occasionally you can see these kind of ganglion-like cells um, like you see in proliferative fasciitis or proliferative myositis. And those can look kind of weird and scary, but you don't want to see big hyperchromatic pleomorphic nuclei here. Mitoses are, are common and they can be abundant, but you usually do not see atypical mitotic figures. And sometimes you see keloidal collagen, multinucleated giant cells, red cell extravasation. I don't personally find that helpful, but I know a lot of people really like to see that. And it is usually present. So, um, and usually nodular fasciitis is a small lesion, three centimeters or smaller usually. Uh, if it's bigger than three centimeters, you should really think twice before calling something nodular fasciitis. It's not that it couldn't be. I mean, could you have a four centimeter nodular fasciitis? Sure. How about five centimeters? Yeah, probably. What about 15 centimeters? No way. So the point is, is the bigger it is, the more likely you are to be wrong. So I feel like three centimeters is a pretty safe cutoff. Beyond that, start really thinking twice. And then usually nodular fasciitis arises from the fascia, right? So thus the name. And, you know, we call it fasciitis and the itis name makes people think it should have a lot of inflammation. I feel like it usually does not. You might find some scattered lymphocytes and histiocytes in there, but it is not usually a highly inflam inflammatory or inflamed lesion, despite the itis name. So I think that's important that a lot of people expect there to be inflammation, but usually there's not much inflammation. And out here, look, this is this is fascia. See, it's it's spindle cells with dense pink collagen. And so pink spindle cells in a bundle is either dense regular connective tissue, which is tendon, fascia, or ligament, um, and or it's smooth muscle or it's nerve. And in this case, we can see that it's super wavy, and the real waviness, that ultra wavy collagen bundles, is not nerve, it's actually what we see in fascia or tendon, usually, the dense regular connective tissue. So here's your fascia right here, here's skeletal muscle right there, and here's the nodular fasciitis coming right off of the fascia. So often, you don't have to see the fascia there, it depends on if they've sampled it or not, but usually when nodular fasciitis grows on the fascia, it does one of three things. It can either make a nodule that pushes up into the subcutis, or it makes a nodule that pushes down into the muscle underneath, or sometimes it grows linearly out along the fascia and kind of sends little spikes or little little uh, feet up into the subcutaneous septa and um, it kind of stretches in and looks kind of spiky and irregular. That's called the fascial pattern because it grows along the fascia. So that's a uh, good nodular fasciitis tips. 
Here is um, nausea fasciitis involving the lumen of a vessel. Do not be afraid that happens. And in fact, you can see some cases of nausea fasciitis are purely intravascular, and they actually may be closely related to organizing thrombus, which also can look a little fasciitis-like. So, so that is not a sign of malignancy. You know, in a lot of tumors, if we see tumor or, or cells in a vessel, we get really worried. But nausea fasciitis, that happens. The other thing is that um, nausea fasciitis, even though it looks a lot like almost identical to what reactive myofibroblasts look like, like say in granulation tissue, it turns out is actually probably a neoplasm because it has a rearrangement. And what genes are rearranged in nausea fasciitis? Uh, MYH9, UP, USP6. Yes, MYH9, USP6 fusion has been described, a translocation. So for years, we thought that this thing was a reactive process because it often arises after trauma. It often goes away on its own. It looks like reactive myofibroblasts, and yet it seems to have a translocation, which is kind of blows everyone's mind. It's so weird, but it seems like uh, that's the case here. And do you know there is actually another process, not in soft tissue, but in bone, that has that same exact fusion sometimes, aneurysmal bone cysts, oh. which have areas that look like fasciitis. They often have, not all, but a majority of them, I think, have that same fusion, which is kind of interesting, um, especially because you can see this fasciitis like appearance in that entity so i don't i really almost never need to test for that although I, i've occasionally tested for it in cases where i was thinking about aneurysmal bone cysts versus other things um but if, for nausea fasciitis i don't think i've ever actually sent it for molecular analysis so oh and here's some of that example of the keloidal collagen bundles so i do like to tell my clinical colleagues that nausea fasciitis is benign Sometimes it will regress on its own even. So even if they shelled it out and the margins are positive, it usually does not recur occasionally. So if I'm confident of the diagnosis, I feel like even if they didn't get, you know, get the whole thing out, I feel like it's optional to excise it. They can watch and wait and it usually will go away or, or sometimes it will go away on its own. If it doesn't go away or it does persist, they can go do more surgery. But I don't feel like a complete excision with negative margins is indicated. I think you don't have to do that. So that's just my personal view. Um, not trying to tell anyone what they have to do, but that's the way I kind of think of it and how I advise my clinical colleagues who are treating patients. And there's an example of tissue culture plus myxoid cystic degeneration plus hemorrhage, extravasated blood cells, plus keloidal collagen, all the stuff in one picture. Nausea fasciitis. Because of the mitosis, sometimes people get concerned, um, especially the early cellular um, lesions of these and can overcall them as sarcoma. And that's really important to not do that for obvious reasons.